Hi, good evening. Um, so I am here this evening. Probably everyone guessed I would make a response video. Um, so Philead Ministries, James, had done a, a video, I think he named it something about disclosure. Um, I really don't feel, again, like you've disclosed anything that really wasn't already known on YouTube, and I'm not sure why. Um, but anyway, I'll get into that later as to why I don't think you really disclosed anything, but I took a few notes of, of your video. Um, but anyway, let's go right for it. You, you mentioned lukewarmness. Now, I have asked before in a video to you, James, that I would love to know what you what you think. Okay, you are saying that there are lukewarm churches, and you believe that. So if you believe that there are lukewarm churches in your country today and around the world, then you must have... Um, a picture of what that looks like and I had asked before I would like to have you give an idea of what you think a lukewarm church is now having said that I already know what Lee feels because Lee put it in the sisterhood a few times um, that she believes that lukewarmness lukewarm churches are those who are not observing Torah that that's lukewarm you know that you have um, you have one toe in Christ and the other toe in disobedience, and that would be lukewarm. Now, if it really is the case, I mean, she didn't say that, but I'm just um, gathering from what she says, if that's what she feels, that it's not, oh, that if churches are not being obedient to the Torah laws, then they are lukewarm. She has said that. You know, and of course, you guys will deny that, and then that's where videos and screenshots come in, because if you're going to deny it, I'm going to prove it. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. Um, so she has um, talked about that, that Torah, non-Torah observant churches are lukewarm. Um and you see the problem with that is basically what you're saying, in essence, if that's what you guys believe, or I know that's what she believes because she said it, but if that's what you believe, then what you are saying is that all the churches in the world who are not Torah observant are lukewarm. And, you know, that's a problem. Um, for one thing, lukewarm churches, God is going to spit us out of his mouth, and I find that offensive. Um, and obeying the commandments of God, uh, yes, we should be. Um, but we are talking about the commandments, the Decalogue, um, which you talked about the Sabbath. And the Sabbath is observed by Christians is just observed as he is our rest all the time because his spirit is residing in us. Um, so we rest in his Sabbath. He is our Sabbath rest. Um, so we don't ignore that. Um, we've just come to understand it differently than the way Israel was instructed to observe it. Um, and that's okay. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, you, the other thing that you had mentioned is that you and Lee, you know, prayed and appealed to the Father, you know, re reveal your truth and expose the lies and filter everything through the word. But the thing is, is that seems to, um, you seem to be saying that the rest of us haven't done that. And that's quite offensive because we have done that. I mean, I was, you, you all know, I'm a pastor's kid. And I was raised in the church. 
and I was raised with certain doctrine. And there's certain doctrine that I was raised with that I don't believe anymore or I have a different view of. But listen, the rest of us have done the same thing too. You know, I've been in the church for decades. I'm 49. I was going to church when I was still in my mama's tummy. Um, and, but when I was, uh, I don't know what age I was, but it was probably nearing 30 years old or so that I started. Um, I, I actually said to my parents, I said, I don't want to believe what I believe because that's what I was raised in. Uh, I want to search the Bible and I want to um, I want to make sure. And my father cried when I said that because it 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 is what he wants for his kids. Um, mommy and daddy aren't going to hold our hands when we stand before the Lord. And our church is not going to hold our hands before we stand before the Lord. Um, when we stand before the Lord, it's going to be us and him. And so I needed to know uh, that what I believe um, is biblically sound. Um, I don't know if any of you have watched the um, the series, The Truth Project. Very good. I highly recommend it. Um, I forgot how, um, Del Tackett, I think is his name, is the one that did it from Focus on the Family. I've been through the series three times. Um, the quote he says is... Um, how do you know that what you believe is really real or something like that? I can't remember how the quote is. Um, I, I might post it in the comment section. But um, it, it it's important to study truth claims of what you are raised in. Muslims should be doing that. And, you know, I, I encourage every denomination and every individual and every religion to research it out and that's exactly what I did um, which is why I became an intellectual uh, I, I know that Lee has said that there are intellectuals um, in our group who know the faith but have not been circumcision, circumcised in the heart. Which is, I, I don't know who she's talking about, but I know with me, um, being circumcised in the heart was a real truth, true supernatural event um, to take me from a life of sin to a life of hating sin was overnight. Um, but that was a few years ago. And so we don't stay on the milk of salvation. We get into the meat, which means we're going to study and we are going to, you know, discern and we're going to intellectualize <laughs> our, uh, the doctrine in our Bible. Um, I want to stop here and say that um, uh, James, you had, you know, you wanted to look past the doctrine and the dogma. Doctrine is a biblical word, James. There's nothing wrong with doctrine. Doctrine is just simply teaching. You know, it, it talks about it in Titus 2.1. The um, Greek word is didaskalia, didaskalia, which means instruction, teaching. It's actually where the, um, the title Didache came from, the Didache that was written in the first century. Um, it's um, 
it's not an inspired text, but it's uh, it was um, it does have some of the Christian doctrine from the Bible in it, and that's where that comes from, the Didache. So maybe it's pronounced Dida Dida Didascalia. I can't remember. Anyway, doctrine is just teaching. It's just taking. Um, the doctrine of sanctification, the doctrine of justification, the doctrine of um, salvation. Uh, and, you know, bringing all those verses in together for a teaching. There's nothing wrong with the word doctrine. I guess that was my point with that, is uh, looking past the doctrine. You form a doctrine within your belief system. So there's nothing wrong with doctrine. Um, but, yeah, going back, at any rate, uh, yes, I very much did do that um, in my late 20s, early 30s, where I just took that the word and I just said, okay, how does what I was taught line up with the word and how does the word, you know, I compared them and I was pretty in depth about it. The other, oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to say is Lee um, talks about how there's these intellectual Christians as if it's a bad thing, but you, James, on the other hand, are saying that you need to, um, you want God to reveal the truth and expose the lies and you filter it through the word. That that there is a sense of um, learning intellectualizing as well as um, the Holy Spirit leading you in truth. But there's nothing wrong with learning the fundamentals of the faith through the word. I, I don't understand why it's a bad thing for someone who has already been circumcised in the heart, um, who had a life-altering change in their life, who went from some pretty disgusting sin to walking in the newness of life that I can't years later be pounding really hard into um, Study. I don't understand why study is a bad thing. It's, it's like it's like you're saying that um, too many, you know, the the theology schools and the doctrine and the you know intellectual Christians. There's nothing wrong with us, you know. And I know a lot of you have said I don't know the Bible. Um, which is really quite funny. But, um, yeah, I just, I wanted to touch on that, that just because you folks have studied, and honestly, you say you studied and that's all you studied, but you're pulling from Shofar Mountain and 119 and, um, you're pulling from uh, the Way documentary. You're not just, you, you, none of us can say that we've just sat with the Bible and nothing else. We have outside influences, um, but we always have to bring it back to the Word, regardless of the, of the influences. Um, you can't study the Bible through the fallacy of confirmation and bias, you know. Uh, study the word and that's great if someone else confirms that but um, anyway I uh, don't see a problem with being a very very firm serious student and I, I think I, I tend to take things I'm serious about things I, I um I don't think people... I don't know if people, when they're studying, it's like it's like I'm the type of person that 
very focused on what I'm studying. So I'm not sure there's going to be sweetie pie, lovey-dovey um, vibes flowing from me. Because studying is a serious thing. I think there's times to be hugging and loving on people, you know, holding a patient's hand and hugging a grieving person and um, helping your neighbor. And um, but there's times of, you know, it's like Ecclesiastes. There's times to smile and mourn and laugh and cry. And, you know, when I'm focused on apologetics, and polemics. It's a serious topic. Um, and it, it honestly, I do smile all the time. And uh, it doesn't matter. I'll get picked on how I do this video too. <laughs> I don't really care. But um, I, I don't think it's a bad thing to be serious about biblical truth. Uh, I just don't, I don't understand. Anyway, let me see. Um, oh, yeah, he talked about, you talked about other things, and um, you have your orthodox beliefs, but there was other things that you don't buy anymore. Well, I'm the same way. <laughs> um, I was raised Baptist, but I don't believe absolutely everything. Um that I learned when I was young, I took it to the word. Um, just because we don't agree with you doesn't mean we are not digging, you know, in deeper, you know, getting in deeper into the word. We've all been deep into the word. Um, I just strongly believe your conclusions are wrong, but to say that, you know, to, well, you didn't say that, but to imply that the rest of us are not doing that is just, it's not true. Um, let me see here. Truth without, you know, so something about truth without, um, truth without spirit. I can't remember what you said. Dry, dead religion. I can't remember what I read here, but, um, none of us are looking for a dry, dead religion. I, uh. No. Let's see here. Hunger. Desire for truth. So are we. I mean, so are we. I've said before that, that, that once the Lord became real in my life, it was a thirst and a hunger. Like, I used to open up my Bible all the time when I was young and read, and I was reading to read. Now it, like, comes to life off the pages. I mean, the rest of us do that. Just because we, um, are not going to, I'm sorry, twist what Galatians says, for instance. We're not the ones that are twisting, I'm sorry. Um, you say that, okay, churchianity, you know, you get that from the way, you know, there are good churches that are not Torah observant, I'm sorry. Um, asking questions. You, um, it floors me that you think it's okay to ask questions on 2,000 years of Christianity, but nobody can ask questions of philia and get a concise, complete, serious answer. Even today, on your video, I am, and I am told that people's comments were deleted. For questions. 
And if you really have questions about all this stuff that you're saying that you have questions about, you know, like um, Sabbath and Torah observance, then why aren't you willing to dialogue and maybe get some answers outside of yourselves? It, it's like you're not teachable unless it's unless you're, you're willing to take that teaching through someone that already agrees with you, confirmation bias. How about being willing to dialogue? I mean, I could teach you something, you could teach me something, but you guys are not willing to dialogue, and I, I that floors me. I don't even remotely understand why dialogue cannot happen. And it could be pleasant dialogue, but you refuse and you will keep refusing. I don't get it. Um, let me see here. We're not trying to change the biblical church model. All good churches are trying to live a as close to New Testament Christianity as we can. But to presume that that has to be Torah observance is not allowing the full New Testament to speak. It's not. I'm sorry. It's picking and choosing. Now is a part of your video that you get into Christmas and Easter. And it being riddled with paganism. And this is frustrating to us who have watched the, the video of yours today and we've talked because you're not getting what our questions are and our concerns are. We have no problem with you not celebrating Christmas or Easter. Did you know that? We have zero problem with that. We don't even have a problem with you observing the feasts. Okay. And we don't say you're a cult because you don't celebrate Christmas or Easter. I've known Christians long before Philia was even a thought in anyone's mind who don't observe those, and I can have fellowship with them. Um, but the problem is, okay, is that if you're not going to celebrate those, fine. But don't make up things that are not true about them. The things that might have pagan links to them that are backed by history, fine. <laughs> the things that are not and are just uh, made up with no primary source history, historical documentation, you shouldn't be promoting. So, do you realize that some of the things that you're promoting as to the pagan links um, Richard Dawkins had up on his website, but because even atheists, even other atheists who are educated and uh, and 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 other people of other faiths got after him for the historical inaccuracies of what he was posting. He took the post down. Okay? He took whatever it was, I can't even remember, but he removed it because he got so much flack for posting something that's not historical. Um, I don't understand why, why you observing the feast and shunning Christmas and Easter can't be done, cannot be promoted based on valid reasons. In other words, the feasts should be able to stand on their own. They should be able to stand on their own. Um, you don't need to make up things about Christmas and Easter for, you know, you to observe the biblical feasts. We don't have a problem with you observing biblical feasts. We have a problem with them being promoted by philia as a requirement 
We don't find that in scripture. That's a lot of twisting. And that brings me to another point that I want to make. Another question that you have not answered and that needs to be transparent is what you feel sin is. And yes, the Bible does say that sin is transgression of the law. The problem is which laws? Okay. Is it feast laws? Is it dietary laws? Um, be clear with that because, as I've said before, if, if sin is lawlessness and lawlessness is Torahlessness, then 99.9% of born-again Christians are going to hell by that teaching. And, you know, and I know Lee has said, and others have said, and I don't think that you guys are, are grasping this. You know, Lee has said, I don't do Torah laws for salvation. I do it because I love the Lord. We are saved by grace. Um, and I'm going to try to obey the laws. And when I fail, grace covers me. I'm paraphrasing. Okay. But that's not our point. What about the Christians who do not try to observe and they are ceremonial and civil. <laughs> what about those who refuse to because they believe we're not under it? Because, well, frankly, our Bible says that. Um, so Leah's saying that grace covers her when she... Grace covers her when she fails. But the problem is, is that non-Torah observant Christians will always miss the mark. They will always not be observing Torah. And so if we are without Torah, willfully, then that means we're willful sinners and we're lawless. And Jesus will say, depart from me, lawless ones, into the lake of fire. So you're not grasping. I'm not talking about when I ask these questions. I'm not talking about a Torah observant individual who tries their hardest to obey the Torah laws and and fails at times. I'm talking about someone who obeys none of them other than the Decalogue and Sabbath being a complete rest all the time, who refuses to remove leaven from their house because it doesn't apply to me. I'm refusing. I'm refusing to be bound to a feast that was set for Israel, and you can look up once, I've posted this a lot, Psalm 147, he has not done so for any other nation, they have not known them, it was only for Israel, and that grafted in, it does not specifically say grafted into the laws, but anyway, I'm talking about an individual like me, and 99% of, 99.9% .9 of Christians who obey the Ten Commandments to the best of their ability and fail at times, but refuse to obey removing the leaven from their house, or they refuse to give up bacon or lobster. That's willful sin. See, that's what I'm getting at. And if that's the case, then yes, you are teaching 
that salvation is based upon one, Jesus' blood, and two, are you repentant against disobeying the Father's laws? I mean, on your side of your um, point with this. If your disobedience against the Father's laws um, I forgot where I go was going with this. But anyway, I'm saying I'm not I guess not, I'm not talking about an individual who tries and fails. I'm talking about an individual that says, "No. I'm not going to remove leaven from my house this week. This this is not for me and I'm not going to do it. I might do it to observe it because I can see how it pulls the Messiah in and um, I've I've in my lifetime, I've observed a couple of them, and I, I would observe them again. But the pro the issue is, is are we bound by this? Is it a sin to not remove leaven from your house? Is it a sin to um, go to work? On Saturday is it a sin on Saturdays on my job I have to I don't work very many Saturdays because we rotate but a few a year is it a sin for me to go work I don't believe it is and so I'm gonna go work um, is that willful sin according to um, Torah observant doctrine yes it's a willful sin Therefore, I'm a willful sinner, I am not repentant, and I am going to hell. That is the teaching of Philia. See, there's a difference between Marsha, willful sin, if that's what you're going to call not obeying Torah, and Lee and James, sinners who are saved by grace and try to obey the law but are not going to do it perfectly. So, according to your doctrine, your dogma, girl's not going to heaven because I'm willful you see the difference this is what we're trying to get you to say this is this is why we ask you to please define because we don't want people who really are trying to live a life pleasing to the Lord to get into your ministry and all of a sudden they find out that they're vile sinners because they're not observing the feasts and because they eat pork and that and we don't want them going in, into your ministry thinking my goodness I, i'm a willful willful sin willful sinner and <clears throat> i can't be in the lord if i'm sinning against him on purpose and it's a lot of confusion for people and i don't think it's biblical but i would like to know your take on it and be transparent about it you know i've said before please define what you think sin is what is sin what is lawlessness what is sin that is another question i have wanted to ask that i've asked you and i haven't got an answer yet um so the question so far that you haven't been transparent about is I've asked you before, please define what a lukewarm church looks like. Please define what sin looks like. Please prove the attacks against the um, Christmas and Easter. Please prove that historically. If you don't want to obey it, fine. I don't have a problem with, I mean, not obey, observe, excuse me. <laughs> I don't have a problem with people that don't observe that. Uh, you're right. I mean, it wasn't commanded in the Bible. It was not commanded. Um, but the point is, is how much of those pagan claims are accurate? They're actually not. Um, and so I've, I've asked you to prove that. Um, don't keep, keep promoting that if there's no proof. You got a lot of claims flying around. You got a lot of... Uh, people who've written books about it, but that's not this primary historical documents, people. I, I can't uh, really stress that enough. Let me see. What else do I got here? It's going to be a long video. Um, 
Let me see here. Okay. You you guys slam the doc that the traditions. And you bring up the Pharisees, but the thing is, is the Pharisees didn't just have this wasn't about and I've done a video on this. This just wasn't about, Jesus was not saying you can't have traditions. He was saying that those traditions should not be made um, law. Right? I mean, the Pharisees were making an oral law about washing your hands. Um, Christians don't make Christmas and Easter law we're not making a the, the, the Lord is not saying don't have traditions he's not saying that he's saying don't make traditions doctrines and hold it over the, the um, instructions of God and Christian churches don't do that um, I think you miss you guys misrepresent that passage um, Let me see here. Okay, the next thing. I had forgotten to pull this up. This is one of my favorite things to talk about because I studied the list. The 30 to 40,000 denominations is totally a fabricated list. And yes, there are divisions, and yes, there are denominations. But I get, I just wish that people, the internet has been wonderful in some ways and damaging in other ways because um, there's a lot of falsehood and people just buy it hook, line, and sinker. I'm going to pull up, please bear with me. Um, uh, let me see here. I'm sorry, you guys. I wasn't prepared. I had um, always an extremely busy, 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 busy day at work. Oh, here it is. Okay. <clears throat> because I'm kind of a research nerd, I, I, I spent, I don't know, probably at least a couple of months on this list. Uh... So, so, okay, the, the four, is it 40,000 or 44? Oh, I don't even know. But anyway, the list that, that you know, because atheists promote this. I, um, any of these sects, like you have uh, Jehovah Witnesses promote this 40,000. You know, you have all these divisions and there's 40,000. And um, Muslims have said it to me more times than I can think of and um, atheists say it um, but the problem with the 40,000 list folks is that the it was duplicated based on location in the world okay so for instance Pull it up. Give, give a good example. Let's look at the right list. Okay. So here's a good example. Evangelical Lutheran. Okay. Here's a good example. These were listed separately as separate denominations. So the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America... And then there's the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in the Himalayan states and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Madhya Pradesh and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Southern Africa and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tanzania and the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Finland and the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Lat Tavia and the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Papua New Guinea and the Evangelical Lutheran Free Church of Norway. Okay, these are the same 
denominations, but they are different locations. But on the list, they were listed as separate denominations. Tricky, right? They have the same doctrine. They're different locations. Um, uh, let me give you another example here. Okay. The Anglican Church, okay? There's the Anglican Church in um, New Zealand and Polynesia, the Anglican Church in Central America, the Anglican Church in Japan, the Anglican Church of Australia, the Anglican Church of Bermuda, the Anglican Church of Canada, the Anglican Church of Kenya, the Anglican Church of Korea, the Anglican Church of Mal Mal Melanesia, um, the Anglican Church of Mexico, the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea, the Anglican Church of South America, the Anglican Church of Southern Africa, the Anglican Church of Tanzania. Okay, these are all the same denomination, but the 40,000 list lists them as separate denominations. Okay. Um, another example would be Methodist churches. I just name a few of them, I'm just sporadically. I'm just giving you examples. Methodist Church of Fiji and Rotuma. I know where that is. Methodist Church of Great Britain, Methodist Church of Malaysia, Methodist Church of New Zealand, Methodist Church of South Af Africa. Um, and then we have Okay, Christian Reformed Churches, Christian Reformed Church in North America, Christian Reformed Church in Sierra Leone, Christian Reformed Church in South Africa, Christian Reformed Church of Nigeria. Um, um, let me see here. Then there's, okay, and, Christian, and these are basically the same uh, doctrine. There's the Reformed Church in America, the Reformed Church in Austria, Reformed Church in Hungary, Reformed Church in Latvia, a Reformed Church in Romania, Reformed Church in the United States, Reformed Church in Nigeria, Reformed Church of East Africa, Reformed Church of France, Reformed Churches in the Leather Netherlands, Reformed Churches of New Zealand. Okay, so these were all listed as separate denominations on that list. They weren't listed as the same. Um, Presbyterian churches, okay? Where does this start? This is a long list. Okay, here we go. Okay, remember, these were listed as separate denominations. Talk about deceptive. <laughs> Presbyterian Church in America, Presbyterian Church in Canada, Presbyterian Church in Chile, Presbyterian Church in Honduras, Presbyterian Church in Ireland, Presbyterian Church in Korea, Presbyterian Church in Korea, um, two different ones, uh, same denomination. Presbyterian Church in Korea, these are different districts in Korea. Presbyterian Church in Liberia, Presbyterian Church in Malaysia, Presbyterian Church in Singapore, Presbyterian Church in Sudan, Presbyterian Church in Taiwan, Presbyterian Church in Uganda, Presbyterian Church in Africa, Presbyterian Church of somewhere in New Zealand, Presbyterian Church of Australia, Presbyterian Church of Belize, Presbyterian, oh, it's like tongue twister, uh, Brazil, Presbyterian Church of East Africa, Presbyterian Church of Eastern Australia, okay, Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Presbyterian Church of India, Presbyterian Church of Man Manzobique, <laughs> I can't say that, I'm so embarrassed, anyway, Presbyterian Church of Nigeria, Presbyterian Church of Pakistan, Presbyterian Church of the Philippines, Presbyterian Church of Wales, Presbyterian Church of the United States. Okay, the list goes on. Um, I'm trying to see if there was other other good examples because there's you know obviously a lot, but um, there's anything. Else? Oh yeah, all the Church of Gods, Church of God 
in Tennessee, Church of God in Chattanooga, or ch one's in Charleston, one's in Chattanooga, Church of God of Cleveland, Church of God in India, Church of God, you know, so... That would be like every every Torah observant fellowships being considered different denominations. It just so at any rate, I, I studied this list and what I found and um, what I found and actually Catholic churches are all named differently too, even though they have one head, the Pope. They're all listed you know, different, uh, they're not different denominations, they all are under the Pope. There's even Hebrew Roots is even listed here, actually. <laughs> Hebrew Roots. It would be interesting, you guys, to look at this list. It's quite a long list. Anyway, I, I studied this list, and what I found out is that there are actually, when you narrow it down, there are only about 200 different denominations. But if you break that down that even further, there's only about seven different divisions within those denominations that are... Um, doctrinal divisions that are, you know, really divisions. Um, there's only about like seven, and the ones who are divided um, to the point of actually calling them divisions are because of those particular churches, like, add um, outside uh, works, religious works. You know, they add to the 66 books. They add to the 31,102 verses in Scripture. They add to it. They're, they're like adding works to it. Um, you know, adding the catechism to it. You know, adding Ellen G. White to it. That type of thing. So the, I just wanted to point out that that, that list, uh, that's an error to be kind of promoting that. And I know a lot of people don't know that. I'm not going to hold that against you, but just not a good idea to use that in argumentation because it's, just, it's not founded in any re reality. Um, it's an interesting list to look at, but we'll, we'll continue on here. Let me bring up my camera again. Hey, 46 minutes. Um, Uh, you're talking about, oh yeah, I had asked what is sin, so I would love an answer to that. If you love God, you will keep my commands. Well, again, I mean, the commands are the Ten Commandments. Uh, I we, we do not believe... Um, in biblical context, that that means the feasts. Uh, we believe they were fulfilled. Um, oh, let me see here. Yeah, I wrote down about Christmas and Easter again. That you know, that was a question I had. Is you know, just prove the claims that you make. I don't care whether you observe Christmas, but just don't make claims that are not founded in reality. It's just, yeah, and I don't understand why you guys are upset that if someone asked you to be transparent. That should be, that should be the, the first thought after proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ for a ministry should be transparency. Uh, yeah. We're not saying that the questions that you have makes you sound like a cult. It's the doctrines that you hold and the way you run the ministry. <laughs> um, let's see what else. What else do I have here? 
and a couple other pieces of paper here. Um, You'll know a tree by its fruits. Um, I'm not sure our fruits are bad. I'm not sure. I, I guess I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, we uh, we don't laugh at Lee being ill. That's a bold-faced lie. I, I actually don't know where you get that from. Um, I'm been working in healthcare my whole adult life. I've worked in seven years in an emergency room, um, 15 years, uh, a lot of this was combined, so bear with me, um, 15 years on uh, med surge, um, uh, float to the intensive care unit for all of those 15 years. Seven and a half years in OB, OB newborn nursery. Um, I did uh, some home health. Not a lot, but I did some. Um, nursing home. Um, hospital pharmacy for four years. Uh, medical assistant in primary care for, uh, I think it's been 10 years now. Yeah, it's been 10 years, maybe 11. Um, women's health, I did that for two years. Um, I ran a daycare, but anyway, I was actually, I wasn't trying to give you my work history, I was trying to give you my medical history and I take seriously illness I don't think it's funny um, I don't think false doctrine is funny either so um, no I uh, we do not have the bad fruit of laughing at Lee um, there is no bad fruit in contending for the faith um, as far as the accusation that we're breaking the law, no laws were broken. We have in our members um, two, uh, a person that has two family members that deal directly in cyber law. We have not broken the law, okay? There's nothing against the law about making screenshots. There's nothing against the law about copying and sharing a video. It's not against the law. And, um, it, you know, here's the thing. If it was actually against the law, people, then that would mean that all the complaints that you made to Facebook and YouTube means that they are um, in conspiracy to break the law. You know, you really think that if we're breaking the law, excuse me, I need a drink. You really think that if we're breaking the law, that uh, Facebook and YouTube are going to sit there and be like, yeah, go. Of course not. <laughs> we're not breaking the law. I haven't broken any law. I'm, I'm really not worried about it. Um, yeah, not worried about it. Uh, let me see here. Um, I, you know, defamation. There was no de The thing is, there was no harassment. There was no de defamation. I haven't said anything that wasn't true. Okay? There's no defamation. Um, and there's no harassment. Um, it's not considered harassment to make response videos and to copy, copy videos and to screenshot. That's not harassment. Look, I have not called her um, her home. I have not contacted anyone's place of work. I have not contacted, I have not, you know, harassed her at her place of worship. I haven't um, uh, messaged her privately in any forum. 
Um, she messaged me a couple of times, and I responded, but I've never initiated a message with her. Um, I don't comment on her YouTube videos. I don't go to her YouTube videos and comment on them. I don't go to her main filia page and comment. I don't um, go to her personal... I, I mean, she's got me blocked now, but I, I never went to her personal page and harassed her. There's no legality at all. I, I wasn't har There's no harassment. As a matter of fact, Lee, you got like 75 comments on my video and I haven't commented once on yours. You're coming to me. I'm not going to you. Eh. Um, think what you want to think. And he can draft letters if he wants. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> uh, so I haven't said that. I might remove it. Um, I just want people to be aware, which is why I put a disclaimer on it. It's not to hurt Lee. It's to make other people aware. Um, anyway, we'll see. Um, and you said if a spirit ha if a person has the spirit of the Lord, they'll see the sincerity. Um, not everyone that has the spirit of the Lord within them, which I do. Um, is going to agree with you. Um, seeking him, seeking his truth. I wrote that down. Yeah, we're all doing that. Just because we don't agree with you doesn't mean we're not actively seeking and have been seeking for decades and studying. And um, you know, most of us have said, you know, this is where we're, the way we were raised, but um, what do we believe? Let's get into scriptures. We do that. You, 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 you give this impression that we're all just sitting in our churches, like, oh yes, whatever you say. No, <laughs> we're not doing that. You know, I was raised to be to to um, uh, yeah, I was raised to uh study things out for myself. I'm very thankful for that. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's silly to say that the rest of us are, give the, implying the rest of us don't do that. You say you're not anti-church or anti-Christian. And that's nice. However, Everything that you promote and all the ministries that you promote are big on coming out of the churches. And I know Lee has said it before. You know, she's not big on the churches. And you said at the beginning of the video that, you know, we're all lukewarm. So um, as far as you, uh, you mentioned not anti-Christian look, Lee has said... And again, yeah, you know, deny, deny, and then that's why we have to do screenshots. But she does, she, she doesn't like being called a Christian. She doesn't call herself a Christian. Um, she has said that when she's speaking to others, not in her um, immediate Torah life, uh, she'll use the reference Christian, but she doesn't prefer it for herself. Just, you know, to point that out here. And I don't really being uh, appreciate being called a coward. Um, I actually, even though we've spent months trying to get you to be transparent, I've never called you or Lee a coward. Never. Why, why would I call you a coward? I don't think you're a coward. I think you're... Um, uh, you have cult behavior, and I, I do think you're running a cult. Um, there's various degrees of cult. I'm not saying you're a hideous evil one, but um, there's some problems. And But as far as calling us cowards, do you think that was really called for? Um, I think what else? I, I'm sure when I close this video, there's a million things. I was going to get a drink, wasn't I? Sparkling water. I'm trying to drink more water. To 
tonight I'm celebrating hmm, 35 days on a low carb diet. I did a low carb diet before. I was actually on a low carb diet, pretty strict low carb for two straight years. Well, 2012, I went to Guatemala on a mission trip and I did six months worth of low carb um, because I wanted to, you know, it's hot down that area. So I was like, I didn't want to be sweating because my body has to work hard. So I did that for six months and then when I was down there, I couldn't stay on it because they like carbs down there. And um, so then more recently, a couple of years ago, I had been on low carbs for two years straight. And then I started working at this new office. And boy, do they like food. They like um, celebrate everything. They celebrate everything. They celebrate the Super Bowl with like tailgate parties they we always have um uh drug reps that come in and they bring a plethora of dunkin donuts and you know what they said there's a counter behind my desk maybe i'll take a picture of it sometime um it's a long counter and that's where they put all the spread it's like i can turn around and grab something so not fair and then I went off the diet, but I'm back on it, and I am so thrilled. I have a lot more energy. Um, and so 35 days ago, I quit sugar, um, soda, and carbs all at the same time. Admittedly, I was cranky for a few days, but I did it. I, I, I um, quit root beer. A year ago in April, I quit Diet Coke. And that was I was a big addict of that, and I quit that, and I was off of that for a long time before I started um, drinking root beer. And I was only drinking root beer about one bottle a week. And I did really good for a while, but then it started being like daily, like the Diet Coke was. Um, so yeah, 35 days. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing with my life. My grandmother passed away, and like I've told uh, many people, it was the happiest funeral I've ever been to. Um, it was a lot of um, just praising the Lord. Um, so that was good. Um, I guess I'm just ending this video with talking about my life a little. Uh, let me see here. Um, the doctor that I was working for retired, and then two other doctors left my practice, so they're recruiting for new doctors. I'm working with a temporary one, who I just found out the other day as a Christian. Oh, a really neat story. I'll tell you the story. So... Um, you tour observers might appreciate this, actually, maybe. So I signed in a patient the other day. She had um, UTI symptoms. So I was signing her in, and I got her into the exam room. And I am not kidding. She sat down, and I started taking her vital signs. And she took me by the hand, and she said, I got to tell you this. And I didn't know her. I've never met her, by the way. Don't, never met her. She was in our practice, but I, our practice is big. I've never met her. She wasn't my patient. Um, and she said, I am <laughs> fluent. Okay, for someone that loves the Bible, this just like, I was so excited. I am fluent. She just, like, outlawed this. I am fluent in Greek and Aramaic and Hebrew. I went, yeah, all right. And she starts talking to me in Hebrew. Don't get too excited. 
uh, people. She she was not a Torah observant. Um, she started talking to me in Hebrew, and she said, "Yeshua Hamashiach, the right way." I mean, not that. I mean, because don't get me wrong, I can't learn languages to save my life. I did take a Greek. Um, I did take Greek classes from a professor at my previous church about that. That was just foundational. <clears throat> but anyway, it was just neat to hear her say all this stuff. And I don't know why she blurted it out to me, but she was like, and she says, and I'm a biblical historian. She doesn't know me. You know, like, she's just telling me this stuff. Me, of all people, because this stuff it just excites me. I'm a biblical historian, and I'm an apologetic. Um, and, you know, she told me all the uh, uh, cults that she um, had been um, trying to discuss with. And uh, what was else that she said? She was like... Um, talk to me she was she I couldn't even believe it like seriously she doesn't know what my life is about right and um my, the whole philia experience but she was like talking to me about she almost said and said something about and you know that verse in Corinthians about head covering and then she talked to me about the book of Enoch and um you know the history behind that and I'm just sitting here going you know it's great that she was like we had a no-show patient and then she was uh, way early for her appointment, appointment. Like, she was like 40 minutes early for her appointment. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to go get her out in the waiting room, get her in early. Um, because I was taught to just, patients here, you just go get them. Um, <laughs> so we had plenty of time to talk. And she was like, when she started the conversation, she's like, do you have time to talk? And I'm like, you know, it was pleasant at first until she started blurting this stuff up, out. And I was like, I sure do have time to talk. And um, she she has offered for me to be under her tutelage. And I can't remember all of what she said, but she just kept going on and on. And, you know, she says the the Jews believed in the, you know, the the plurality of the one God, and this is what each ad means, and I'm not sure how I'm pronouncing it right, and, you know, she starts uh, rattling off all this historical stuff, and um, it was just, a, it was amazing, and to the point, this, and the reason that I'm saying this is that's how I learned that the doctor that I'm, the temporary doctor that I'm working for, I had no idea. I did see a cross ring on her. It was a small, simple cross. And, you know, you can't always gauge as to whether that means a person's a Christian or not. Um, but so after I came out of the room and, and then after the doctor saw her, the doctor came out and she said, Man, she said, that woman is smart up here. I can't even believe it. She's going on and on and on. So she saw it too. It was like, she's like, the things that she was saying and the fact that she just sat there just like, and I, I actually did ask her if she heard of Hebrew roots and she actually didn't know what I was talking about, which, which is sad, which is why we do what we do because it's actually not well known yet. Um, this is a heresy, I believe, and um, so it's sad to me that even some of the um, some of the what was I going to say? Yes, even some of the apologists, like they just don't have a clue yet. It's not. I don't know, but yeah, she was just kind of like when I asked her if she knew what Hebrews roots was, she was like. Yeah, she says Jesus was a Jew and, you know, all the stuff that us who are not Torah observants already know. But some of the other things that she said was very clear that she's not Torah observant. <laughs> um, oh, and she had she had she had um, very strong um, Jewish heritage, too. And so it was just so fascinating to talk to her. But yes, that's when I found out that the doctor that I worked for was a Christian because she came out and she was telling me that. And I said, yeah, I was so fascinated. These are things that I have studied. 
And that's when my doctor says to me, are you a Christian? And I said, I sure am. She wanted to know what church I went to because she's temporary in the area. She's from the South, um, a Southern accent, and she's been going to a Baptist church a couple towns over. So I was like, yeah, you should come to visit my church, you know, one Sunday or something like that. So hopefully she'll come. My church is a church plant. So, um, I told, told her, I said, it's a small church. And she says, oh, that's okay. I mean, we don't even have a building yet. We meet at the bottom of a, of a art building, a, an art building in town that's run by a Christian. Um, so, yeah, uh, what else is going on in my life? There's that, you know, working with, uh, with a new provider. And um, my 21-year-old daughter, she's my youngest daughter. She got her first job. Um, which is really cool that she works as a um, you know, housekeeper at a nice inn. And guess where the inn is? I mean, I said to her, I said, dear, I said, quote, two percent of the population, if that gets this opportunity. She walks out the store and she walks across the crosswalk, and there is her job. I mean. I was always used to live in a main. You're, you're traveling 30, 45 minutes to your job. Of course, I live right close to my job now. Uh, it's just a four-minute drive, three-minute drive. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, right across the road. So we've got that going on. So I'm all proud of her. She got her first paycheck. And uh, it was exciting times. Um, I have some time off in July, and I'm going to go to my parents' camp and just kind of relax. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. But, yeah, I did want to respond a little bit to James. and um, I mean, just, just don't assume that the rest of us have not um, been very willing to scrutinize what we were raised in. I would encourage scrutinizing. I've told people that in the past. Um, so yeah, I, I just don't think that you you didn't really you didn't really expose anything. You didn't get down to the nitty and gritty of what's upsetting people. You really didn't. You know, it's one thing to say we just have these questions and want to obey Torah and we don't want to. Uh, observe Christmas and Easter. Okay, fine, but um, that's not actually our issue. Our issue is making it a requirement. Um, are we sinning if we don't? Let's just let's be more um, appreciative of what people want to hear from you. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I, I'm not even sure people will watch the whole of this video. Um, and that's okay. But, yeah, I'm looking for more um, transparency than that, honestly. And I think a lot of others are, too. So, anyway, God bless everyone. And I hope you have a fruitful and very happy and... Um, God honoring week and we'll see you at the next video whenever that is. Okay, God bless.